in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Yes, sir. And Jesus increased. Luke 2 52. He grew. He increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor with God and with men. This is true for ministry. This is true for business. This is true for leadership. This is true for personal finance. There is the law of process. As powerful, watch this, as powerful as the word incarnate was. When he entered the womb of Mary, you would think Jesus should develop in one week. After all, the father wants, you know, believers to be saved. Mary had to go through the natural course, is that true, of carrying a baby. When Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, he said, according to the time of life. There are things that when God wants to help you, he will grant you patience to endure. He will not necessarily fast track the process. Because there are things, the lesson you learn on the journey is greater than what you obtain. In fact, it is what maintains what you obtain. So the Bible says, wealth that is gotten by vanity. Unfortunately, there are many people today who are wealthy. They cannot defend their wealth because it did not come by growth. So they mismanage it. You find young people mismanaging their parents' wealth and inheritance in one year, two years, you find out that, you know, a wealth estate that was built over 20, 30, 40 years diminishes in less than two years because they handed it over to children who did not have the mental constructs to maintain it. Please refer to my message, Redefining Inheritance. Listen to it very carefully redefining inheritance i teach there that there are five kinds of inheritance that every father every leader every superior must transfer to those who are coming and if you don't you have destroyed the generation coming money and physical things is the least and the fifth of that inheritance the first and the highest inheritance you can give any man is your convictions your convictions is transferable. That is what made you you. Now, in, in Africa, we believe that loving children means giving them access to anything, anyhow, when they want, without training. After all, is my child. So we do not have third, fourth, fifth generation. There are very few regions in Africa and Nigeria that can perpetuate wealth. Because you have a lot of young people who are careless, they just tumbled into millions and billions and they waste their parents' estates. There are people who, when the owners, the people who started that wealth journey, as soon as they die, the, the entire wealth does not even reach two years. Imagine if the prodigal's father, the prodigal son's father, handed over his entire estate to that foolish boy. He, he, still, he still would have finished, I hope you know that. I'm not calling him foolish as an insult. It's a description. He was foolish. Look at the things that he did. As soon as he got the money, he ran away. He lost relationship with the father. There is no record of him contacting the father to say, how are you? I'm away, but just to let you know you are still my father and I appreciate you. You see that? He left and there were wicked friends that were waiting for him already. And they started spending the money. Question, where were the friends when he was with the pigs? There are friends called friends for food. I resist them from coming to your life. What are they called? Friends for food. As soon as it arrives, here they come.
As soon as the contract arrives, here they come. You know, I prayed for you. You will be surprised. I just did not tell you, but I know, I know that it, if not for my prayer, you will not get that contract. And then they now say, oh, they hear a siren and say, police, are they, what are they coming here for? On their way going. The Bible says a friend is made for adversity. A friend that cannot stand with you through is not a friend indeed. Is someone learning? Unfortunately, some of us, those are the kinds of friends we like because they have mastered the art of singing your praises. They sing you to penury. You are lazy, they still clap for you. You are unserious, they still clap for you. Prayerless, they still clap for you. So impatience. I pray that you will have the grace to be patient. In the name of Jesus Christ the grace to be patient isn't it incredible that most times it's people who do not have money that have over bloated demands of what life should deliver immediately if God allowed us to read some of the prayer requests yeah, I'm sure some of them I will run away first you know how Moses ran away from that that serpent because you will be surprised someone who may not have anything will just write these are my prayer requests number one an SUV 100 million a house somewhere in Maitama or Sokoro 300 million or 1 billion God you can do it and the person who is you see God is just looking angels too are looking you know the spirits of just men everybody's looking what kind of a believer is this yes sir are we together same patience please shout it same patience listen if you wear tomorrow's cloth today, you walk naked tomorrow. If you eat tomorrow's food today, hunger would disgrace you. You can move gradually with gallancy and make up your mind that when you leave a realm, you've left it forever. Don't let impatience take you somewhere you are not supposed to be. You don't have the money yet, you are flying business class. Everything is shouting wrong, wrong as you are seated there. Your clothes, your attitude is saying you are not supposed to be here at this time. It's not an insult because you do not listen. If you get there by growth, you should have learned the protocol of maintaining that place. Are we together now? You go and pay for an expensive hotel simply because a breakthrough came. You don't know how to open the door that is there. You don't know how to use the toilet that is there. You don't know how to do anything. You just stand there and everybody thinks you are enjoying. You are stranded in that room because your level should not have brought you there. Now, while you are laughing, I want you to pay attention. It's just an example I'm giving. I'd rather walk with Jesus patiently this is even true for ministry there are projects that many there is a difference between faith and foolishness let me tell you process builds capacity there are things i would never do if god has not built me i'm not ashamed to move gradually after all the mission is him are we together there are people who have come up with over bloated projects and right now they are in debt finances is not the devil you just get up from one small room and you want a duplex overnight. Question, can you maintain it? You buy a car of 100 million from, you know, entering public transport. Do you have about 10% to 15% of the value of that car? Because any car you buy, you must have a cash flow that can afford between 10 to 15% the value of that car for its maintenance. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are meetings you should politely reject because those who will be there will put pressure on you. Are we together now? Yes. You should just polite as a way of not disgracing yourself. You may be invited for courtesy's sake, but they invite you and everybody there in hope that you will spend money. And since you know that you may not have them, just politely. impatience the church of the Lord Jesus Christ let us obtain grace to be patient the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience faith and patience faith 
and patience. Don't go around claiming you are going to raise dead bodies. You just started ministry. You just had an encounter. You got born again six months ago. Yes, you are praying every day, but it takes time. The day a real spirit will appear to you, that is the day you will know what happened to the sons of Skiva. You know, most people just talk, you just go and gather a whole family that has generational causes, and you just, now you are a believer in Christ, yes. But remember, I taught them in Zaria that believers must be trained to come into maturity. Are we together? Even the disciples, while they were being mentored by Jesus, Jesus, there were some things they could not do. Hallelujah. You hear that there's an expensive fundraising going on somewhere. You just go and find yourself there. And they keep you in front. You don't know the meaning of, being, of sitting in front there at the fundraising. Because if you, if you grew into that realm, you would have learned what that meant. Now they clap for you while you were coming and you didn't even know what that meant. They now said, okay, it's time and they've handed the mic to you. Out of pressure, you say, well, on behalf of me and my company, I donate 10 million. And the people sit there, those who know you are surprised. 10 million. Are you going to sell your family? Where are you going to raise that money from? Listen, let me submit to you. Listen to me. Please listen. Laugh but listen. That also includes coming out to make pledges in church. I am not against giving. But let me tell you, there are many foolish coming out to make pledges that wisdom is saying go back because you are putting your family in trouble. There are certain levels of giving you should discuss with your spouse as a responsible man. This, don't just sit down and everybody is happy and you just stand up as a man and you just come and stand. What are you donating? You say my house. Your wife sits down there shocked. You are donating your house? all because of pressure i deliver you from it in the name of jesus can i tell you when koinonia started listen when koinonia started with a crowd of people and even though i had the ability to buy at that level whatever car i wanted i would still i, I had a bike it was it was bike that would carry me miracle service I would dress, then I used to wear a lot of suit. You know, you wear that and then you see me with my Bible and you are hearing a bike, you think they are dropping someone. It's Joshua Selman that has arrived. Did it, question, did it stop the sick from being healed? You see, when people know you are honest and serious, they will support your growth. Well, when people know that you are a liar, they will do everything to make sure you learn the lesson. Impatience. Let me give us the last. Laziness. It's as simple as that. Laziness. Laziness. Proverbs 20 and verse 4. Jesus. Freedom from financial captivity. Let's read verse 4. One to read. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Let's read one more time. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold therefore he shall beg in harvest you know the meaning of this that means the person will say well honestly um abuja is too hot abuja is too cold are we together there's terrorists there's there, there, there's terrorism there's kidnapping everywhere i can't risk my life no it should not be the bible says he will beg in harvest hallelujah now can I give you five keys very quickly? Remember, it's a prophetic service. When we'll be doing finance proper as a series, we'll take time and go in depth and deal with certain things. But my focus is on poverty today. I have listed, maybe I should do a recap. I always like to recap so that those who are slow would follow. Number one, ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. The factors responsible for poverty two the absence of value that is needed and useful number three lack of productivity and excellence four the absence of strategic relationships and i told you to note that because it is a major factor that can define your wealth or poverty five bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment six impatience seven laziness there are many young people in our world today 
who are lazy an old man of 60 70 years is sitting outside in the morning a young man is also joining him to sit down outside are we together yes it ought not to be so when a young man stretches himself you will not die listen especially for our gentlemen in this ministry in the name of jesus the son of the living god every spirit of laziness doesn't matter where it came from and it doesn't matter how long it has stayed in this service be delivered forever yeah. my concern is everybody but particularly the gentlemen don't sit down and say there's nothing to do stand up go if you don't have a job go and seek counsel somewhere at least invest your day properly don't sit back watching movies watching football allocate time for it but know that your destiny is at its infancy are we together now or hanging around other people who have certain leverage and then you are there you know parasitically speaking you are not even there to contribute you are hoping that one day you'll get something whereas you are not making the most of your life I detest laziness as a person and I can tell you lazy people will not go far lazy people will most likely be corrupt people lazy people will most likely want to do money ritual and sincerely both corruption and money ritual takes hard work do you know the creativity it takes to steal that that creativity can start a business money ritual because you will not go in the morning or afternoon most likely it's in the night the risk wild animals before you get to the bush that is the same courage you need to market your product and stand you must prosper in the name of jesus for as long as you are under this grace you must prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity now five keys to be free from financial captivity thank you jesus thank you jesus someone's deliverance has been established thank you jesus hallelujah number one a heart for god a heart for god the first key to be delivered from financial captivity you notice i did not talk about the spirits of poverty because they have a special section we're coming there but if i bring the spirit of poverty many of you will not listen to anything again because that is the only excuse you have been using the spirit of poverty is following me i'm showing you what has been attracting it to follow you these things i listed is what it saw that made him come come to you a heart for god second chronicles 26 verse 5 second chronicles let's read together second chronicles 26 verse 5 ready read and he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding in the visions of god the bible says and as long as he sought the lord businessman god made him to prosper let's read the last sentence together and as long as he sought the lord man of god god made him to prosper listen i respect all kinds of opinions secular opinions and and all of that but i am teaching you from a biblical standpoint hear me believers there is nobody who negates god ignores god and would have prosperity that will be balanced and holistic it's a lie you may have money but the many other gaps in your life that only the size of god can fill will bring you back to an unfulfilled life there are many people who have abundant financial resources but you cannot the lives that they live is ugly you would not want to live that life they live in fear they live in doubt they have all kinds of they can have 12 kinds of names around the world depending on where they are that's what they call them simply because they have to create a system of falsehood falsifying everything to survive the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and added no sorrow with it are we together yes a heart for God not the kind of wealth that comes at the expense of your salvation 
not the kind of wealth that comes at the extent you sacrifice everything in your life family there are people who give loved ones distant relatives you know for rituals do all kinds of things for money you find this happen in our world all over terrible shouldn't be a heart for god it is my prayer for you that the kind of money that will make you leave god i am praying this for your sake may it never get to you yeah. hallelujah do you know the kind of money that makes you leave god the kind of money that makes church look like a nuisance i am busy the kind of money that makes your family look like a, an interruption to your life one year you've not seen your wife you've not seen your children you don't care because you are looking for money your children start calling you uncle because they do not know whether you are their father or not i'm not being sarcastic the kind of wealth that will introduce you to groups and demonic satanic fraternities to now begin to practice all kinds of occultic things things that are outside of the value that you were raised by there are many of us here God has brought this word to caution you already because you are threading parts you are just seeing everybody wealthy listen be careful make sure you vet people's relationship with jesus before you start clapping for the money they have you do not know what has died there are people who have sacrificed their destinies covenanted with satan you are just seeing the money they may even help you with it when we teach here about kingdom prosperity and deliverance from poverty we're teaching that because God is able to bring people out and it is to give you the convenience to be able to serve the purposes of God with dignity and integrity that God will raise people in this ministry multi-billionaires in all kinds of global currencies and yet you love the Lord time for worship your heart is still inclined do you know there is nothing as powerful as seeing a wealthy man worship God that is a sermon on his own that you see a wealthy man just saying, Lord, you are the reason why I have all that I have. Do you know how many people get inspired by that worship? That if this man who is the director of this conglomerate, the group general manager, having everything life can offer from a physical standpoint, can still roll on the ground before God. You're watching the wife roll on the ground and the children too roll on the ground. What are you still standing for? You will join them and roll on the ground too. If God has helped that man and he's still rolling on the ground. Remember the Bible calls us living epistles. Are we together now? It is a beautiful thing to see blessed people serve the Lord. That you see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. They are very blessed people that God has helped in this ministry thank god for it and sometimes i am humbled seeing how they stretch themselves to serve the purposes of god that is a lesson any kind of wealth that makes you too big for god is nonsense it's only a pit you are digging so that you enter there if jesus the king of kings left his throne and he came and he died for man there is nobody who will give a flimsy excuse and say, I am too rich to love God. I am too rich to worship God. I am too rich to serve God. I pray for you again that any kind of money, let me repeat it to your hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, any kind of money, financial resources that will take you away from the Lord Jesus Christ or is already taking you away from the Lord Jesus Christ, may it live your life. respectfully speaking that includes certain jobs there are certain jobs that is an attack on your life and it is not for me to sit down and impose upon you but I can tell you this one thing whatever requires you leaving Jesus to obtain it is a waste of your time please believe this I do not know how men survive without him I do not know how people rise without him. There may be many other formulas, but I can only show you that which the Bible provides and that which by the grace of God, he has made sufficient in our lives. Let me tell you the truth. Any kind of money 
that will require you leaving Jesus, leaving prayer, leaving word study, your Christian integrity and your service unto God to obtain it. I repeat one more time, it is not worth it. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You know how wide this world is? That by whatever creativity you gain the whole world and then you lose your soul. I've told him, if there is anything that will ever come to my life in the guise of blessing and it will take your place, my passion, and even distract me from my assignment, may it never arrive. May it never arrive. And I'm praying that prayer even as I'm standing here. I don't care what kind of money. I don't think I'm just speaking nonsense. No. See, if you don't have convictions, the devil will bait you into anything. There are some of us, respectfully speaking, I, I don't mean to insult you, but we are so cheap. Anything can take you away from God. Someone can say, well, going to church, are, are you going to eat in church? Sit down there. I will give you 100,000. And you sit down and a word is coming. A prophetic word is coming that will lift you. Something will come. Can money break courses? Can money break yokes? Money can give you a, a home, but can it give you peace on its own? No. We reject the precious things for mundane things. And then eventually we find out that we only had shadows. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. I'm going to sing that song one more time. Just listen to me. It's a powerful song. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. Yes, you are everything. Listen, can you stand in your office and watch a check of 100 million, 1 billion at the expense of your faith and you close it and shake the person and say thank you for your human sincerity but I love him more than that and walk away and allow other people to say you are stupid while God says well done how many of you today will be able to watch money cars houses that will affect your integrity and watch it and say thank you I know that you think I will come and marry you just because of money. Thank you. I know you're a rich man. I know you're a great man, but you don't love Jesus. I've had you insult Jesus. I've had you say a lot of things. I appreciate your wealth. I don't downplay it, but I'm, I'm not that cheap. I am the daughter of Abraham. I appreciate you, but I'm on my way going. And other people will say, is, is your head working well? God brought such a rich man. It doesn't matter whether he's a wizard, provided he has money, just no. Believers have cheapened themselves so much. Now, I don't downplay, I'm teaching you on finances and I'm going to pray for you. But listen to me, for some of you, God is speaking to you, you need to repent. Even if it's the devil that says, come, once he shows you money, you're on your way going. You will say, Lord, I'm coming. And you're on your way and you'll find yourself in hellfire. Please, money is not everything. Money is important, but Jesus is everything. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. 
You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. Koinonia would rather meet outside under a tree huh? than to get money by crooks and by pranks for as long as I live and for as long as this ministry serves Jesus nobody will manipulate you to get money or dollars or whatever it is no 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 not under the guise of anything you will give will challenge you to give but not manipulation listen I know what you are hearing is uncomfortable but please just trust that I love you and that I'm teaching you the truth. We need to get away, especially, especially our generation of young people. This, this way we have cheapened ourselves all because of money. I can do anything provided you will pay me. Kill, yes. Steal, yes. Destroy, yes. I would join any group. Remove my heart, remove my brain, just give me money. And we think it's not an issue. A generation that becomes so vulnerable to money, a generation that worships money, is a generation that will destroy its civilization. I'm telling you. This is what Satan wants. You see this happening across the globe, and especially in Africa. I'm sorry to say this, but every bad leader was once a bad child. They don't just get into government and start being corrupt. No! It's been a practice, corruption from school, malpractice, and you go scot-free. Am I right on that? Any of it starts graduating like that until now you sit down as a, a, a board member or whatever, and all you are thinking about, how many politicians think about the people they were sent to serve? They may talk and speak nonsense on TV, but you know that if you probe sincerely for many, and, and I'm not just, I'm speaking globally. We need to have a conscience that loves God. It matters how the money comes, not just that it comes. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Can I tell you, there are many people who have been lifted by God today because of their heart for him. They may not have known much, but my God, their love for him. It, 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 made, it makes it look unfair if they remain like that. And you see God will bring strategic relationships to their life. Somebody who just shows up for that family and begins to lift that family. Someone who just shows up for that company and begins to lift that company. There are people who have almost zero financial intelligence. They don't have anything, but the one thing they have is a heart for God. And you will see that God will bring somebody to say, I've been instructed by God to come and help your family. Number two, what is the second key to be free from financial captivity? Mental transformation. The second key, I'm not discussing it, I'm just writing it. The, the second key if you are not transformed mentally, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be sustainably wealthy. You can be, you can be rich overnight by someone blessing you either by favor or relationships. But sustenance is a product of intelligence and transformation. It's the reason why organizations cannot manage their resources Families cannot manage their resources. There are families where the father is working, the mother is working, the children are working, but they are always in lack. Something is wrong. And the problem is not just demons. There is a bankruptcy of mental transformation. And mental transformation is not a gift. You buy the truth. Are we together? And when you buy the truth, you use it. You, 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 you submit to transformation. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mental transformation. You will never rise even financially above your mindset. You can receive money overnight. Someone can bless you. But the sustainability of wealth 
is a product of mental strength. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. I have told you here, the easiest part of wealth is becoming it. Retaining wealth is not luck. You can actually have money. Somebody can bless you. Maybe some inheritance. You see, favor can walk around for you. That is why you see we give testimonies in, ch in church. Praise the Lord. Apostle gave a prophetic word. And somebody just called me out of nowhere and gave me five million. Congratulations. Now, wisdom should continue where favor has stopped. But because there is no transformation, that person will celebrate five million and still be begging after two years. Are we together? Favor is not the only thing you need in your life. It is important, controls the arrival of financial resources. But to be able to manage your entire wealth system, you need a transformed mind. And that will require outsourced intelligence. Are we together now? Most people do not invest in strategic mental you know mental work to build yourself go and listen to my teachings on mental transformation i have taught how mindsets are formed and i have taught you that there are certain mental traits you need to not only attract wealth but to sustain it for instance um frugality frugality is a mindset that helps you to maintain the wealth that you have are we together it is clear financially that you don't spend your capital no when you spend your capital, it is wrong. What God gives you, what favor brings is capital. And then it is up to wisdom now to provide strategies for increase. What you enjoy and spend and sit on is that which comes as a result of increase. And even increase has a, a formula for spending it. When the people came and ate bread and fish, they littered everywhere and went away. And Jesus the wise, Jesus the transformed, told them, gather the crumbs. In other words, just because I have the power to bring forth, the man who multiplied bread was attentive to crumbs. And the ones who did not have the power to attend, they threw their crumbs away, forgetting they will be hungry a few hours later. Are we together? Frugality is a mindset alone. The, the quality of making sure that you cut away wastage from your life. The presence of abundance is not a license for carelessness. Many people are too careless. You are in all kinds of groups that are not profitable to your life. Physically and spiritually, cut away from them. Because it's eating up of your finances. Organizing all kinds of pro of, 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 of um activities that are senseless completely senseless as far as your future is concerned hallelujah there are many of us if we are to be honest god has been faithful in terms of inflow of financial resources it is because of the absence of mental traits like frugality mental traits like gratitude mental traits like honor I was sharing with them in Zaria and I said if you develop, if you cultivate a mindset of honor and gratitude alone, you will not be poor. Your life will be improved and enhanced in a way that will surprise you. Listen, if you are in any kind of relationship and you, do, you feel you don't have enough value to contribute, let me tell you what to bring to the table. Bring gratitude and bring honor. It becomes a sufficient contribution in that relationship that means if you cannot provide the technical skills at the back end of that relationship provide gratitude and provide honor that means you are in a relationship whether a spouse whether a business relationship that seems to look one-sided one person is the one doing the job it will remain unfair until you balance it introducing gratitude I may not have the technical skills. You brought me in this oil and gas company. I know that I'm not adding anything so much in terms of my intellectual, um, you know, capacity. But just to let you know that I am grateful. Thank you so much for being attentive to my family. Thank you so much for even making me a shareholder in this company. I do not take it for granted. And the board members unanimously will say, no, retain this guy there. He may not be contributing anything, but we like him because you are providing psychological support. That is your value. But where you do not have your intrinsic technical value and then you now garnish that kind of bad picture with ingratitude and dishonor, 
you're on your way out from wherever you are to the realm of the poor for some of you as you are listening to me now let me challenge you after I told them again in Zaria over over you know the weekend look for five people in your life who have been active contributors even financially to your life send them a very generous lavish text expressing your gratitude daddy thank you don't say I didn't ask you to give birth to me childish 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 don't do that or your boss don't say I'm walking it's not a favor mm -mm. it's not whether you like them or not that you are responsible and you are matured enough to send a text and I've told you how to communicate gratitude here in Koinonia the way you communicate the goal of gratitude is to make the giver perceive that you are grateful and it is your your responsibility to invent every expression that makes the giver perceive until the giver perceives that you are grateful you have not yet communicated gratitude so for instance if in your world the only way you say thank you is one word thanks you are going to be poor are we together it is true someone gives you a house you say thanks gives you a car you say thanks pays the school fees of your children thanks no and for people who can disturb they will send five text messages in 10 minutes just to remind you I'm sure you've forgotten you were saying you would do a transfer I know that you are busy can I just remind you again and then when the transfer comes is by the next day you now say oh I forgot I saw it thanks you have closed that door and even though it's the year of open doors you will be surprised that you use your own hand the door that prophecy opened that you close it and stood at the back to make sure that door does not open again say amen, amen. please do it listen I will not teach you what will not produce results I'm not here to waste your time to just shout amen and go back and return back no I want you to return with testimonies and say apostle last week I sent a text to someone who I worked for I worked for in 20 uh, maybe 2018 2017 and I just sent him a text sir just to appreciate you I was inspired in church today and I thought to just just um, reminiscing on your kindness through the years and this is me expressing my heartfelt gratitude the Lord bless you I still recall your kindness the Lord increase you the next time you hear a call by 11 30 where have you been are you now walking no sir come and see me tomorrow that's it you can drop your prayer request on the ground and dance around it that's a spiritual principle praise and the rest but if that is the only thing you do you may be disappointed remember they are called forces of advantage not one force so when you isolate one maybe just the power of praise you see that how do you now link up with the person who should help you some of you are in business partnerships you can take the time convey a meeting you are not necessarily discussing anything around the business I just want to appreciate you and subordinates don't sit down and be waiting or or leaders and superiors don't wait for your subordinates to say thank you alone humble yourself and tell your people thank you whether you are a pastor a father can tell his wife and children thank you am I right on that a leader a CEO of an organization don't say it is my company the Lord gave the word but great was the company of them that published it success is a composite of many factors and you must appreciate the several units that contribute to that success and do it do it consistently thank you so much I just called for this meeting to appreciate all of you this company has experienced astronomical growth we still have a lot of milestones but I thought it was very responsible I was inspired to call all of you together I appreciate you you mentioned the units one by one and you see the people trying to be serious and trying to laugh they can't believe that their boss is a person who is saying thank you they can't believe that their superior is the one appreciating them let somebody talk nonsense about you and that's when you will know that you have staff indeed because that gratitude that gratitude plants a jealousy for you in them that beyond the salary or whatever system of reward you are communicating to them their love for you becomes concretized by your communicating gratitude same thing with fathers 
Sometimes you just call the workers within your house or wherever and say just to tell you thank you. Do you know you can give gifts and yet not express gratitude? It is not all about giving money or giving things. That communication articulates your gratitude. It's an assignment I'm giving you. You are a pastor, go back and do it for your leaders. Don't do it every day. Be consistent but don't do it every day. Otherwise there is a generation you are going to produce an entitled generation. That's the Moses kind of generation. By the time you over pamper people, you take away that, that stamina from them. They become children, ever dependent, and they feel entitled. But there is a healthy interjection of thanksgiving, especially from superiors. Do this as a man of God. Gather your pastors who labor your workers and let them know that you appreciate them. It's not about money. It's about your heart. And watch what happens. And teach your people. Koinonia, global, I will teach you gratitude until you get it. I, I am a recipient of the power of gratitude. Someone will always remember you. This man is a grateful man. Who do we look for to be the Nigerian... Um, representative of this company well he doesn't have that kind of qualification but remember that the job that we're running is very social and we need somebody who has this kind of people skill this man has a very warm countenance he's a grateful person and you'll be surprised you will stand there just looking at your qualification without learning all of these things and having the right mental construct someone who may not be able to speak english very well but he knows how to say thank you very well that's the person who keeps going forward if you believe what i've said shout amen, amen. let me hurry up number three how do you get free from financial captivity productivity write it please the third key is productivity productivity as a man of God you must be productive what does it mean to be productive to be able to package your value your contemplation you know I have defended most people think that men of God do not know anything about money from a from a reward standpoint whether you are a preacher or you are a businessman from a value standpoint you are doing the same thing when you bring value that is packaged with excellence and served to a targeted consumer base even though in the case of ministry what ministry you are not selling the value for a price you are motivated by your love for jesus but the law of compensation demands that every time you dispense value that a reward must be credited to you whether it comes as transactional wealth or transformational wealth in either ways there will eventually be a reward system so if you're a man of God, you don't need to manipulate people. Once you dispense value in truth, it becomes impossible. The people whose lives are changing are not too greedy. Give them time to grow. Let the truths that you are teaching them, let them discern that you love them with all your heart. Let me tell you something I have learned from scripture and even from experience. Can I tell you if you're a man of God, here's a powerful secret. Don't burden members with trying to give you money and do. Teach them, pour your heart. Let them see the heart of a shepherd. Let them see the heart of a father and then allow them surprise you. They will surprise you indeed. Are we together? Because you see, their giving to you will be based on their perception of your worth. So one person can give you a car, another person can give you even an estate and think that it is not too much. As far as the value you brought for them is concerned, say productivity. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everyone under the sound of my voice becomes productive from today. Productivity is not about business. Productivity is about getting to a point of competence and excellence. If you are a preacher, do your homework. Learn the scriptures. Put your notes together. Your presentation and your communication. Make sure that everything is put in place. That is productivity. You are selling something. Be productive. Package everything. Clean up the environment. Be welcoming. You have a company. Make sure you brand your impact. Impact cannot be rewarded except it is branded. You see, do you go to the hospital? Do you go to the hospital to eat food, to buy food? No, because the hospital is so branded to let you know 
that it is a place to attend to your medical needs do you go to the filling station to buy groceries I mean generally standing in front of a pump no because it is so branded your impact must be branded to the point that those who need you know you are there if God has granted you a healing grace let the people know that he has placed that grace upon your life God has granted you the grace for leadership and entrepreneurship you have to brand yourself intelligently productivity number four strategic relationships I've spoken extensively about that. That is the fourth key to being free from financial captivity. Have at least one or two people in your life for a start. And if there's nobody strategic in your life, let me tell you the first place to start. Begin by praying. Then begin by working on your character. Two things. Begin by praying and working on your character. My Bible says, He that wants friends will never have so except you, sh you show yourself friendly. Go and learn people's skills. Years ago, I was so blessed and inspired reading Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. One of those materials that shaped my understanding as far as understanding people's skills is concerned. Until today, even as a man of God, I submit myself across all the faculties of my life to build knowledge. I am a student of knowledge, an unrepentant student of knowledge. Hallelujah. Don't say, I know. Yesterday's excellence is today's mediocrity. Find out what it takes to have, to retain, and improve upon valuable relationships. Finally, there is the power to prosper. You must search for it and find it. The power to prosper. What is the power to prosper? It's a supernatural engracing. Is a dimension of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural engracing that comes upon your spirit and comes upon your mind. You see, comes upon your spirit, comes upon your mind, granting you the ability to provide supernatural solutions supernatural solutions, be it in ministry, be it in business. The assignment of the power to get wealth is that your spirit man is empowered by it. Your mind is empowered by it. Consequently, the quality of the actions and the decisions that you take that culminates to superior results. And when you produce superior results, then it attracts financial blessings alongside many other kinds of benefits. This is the power to prosper. The power to prosper is not some arbitrary anointing that does not have a definition. No. The power to prosper has its jurisdiction. It has an assignment. It empowers your spirit man. It empowers your mind, consequently guiding you to take superior actions, make superior decisions that make you a solution provider, a supernatural solution provider. You know that the power to get wealth is upon you when nothing happens natural again. Preaching becomes supernatural. Business becomes supernatural. Are we together? The communication and the transmission of your value becomes supernatural. And listen to me. That is one of the things you are about to receive right now. The power to prosper. It is truly, it's, it's, a, it's the icing to the cake. Just declaring the power to prosper upon people, not having this foundation will be like pouring water through a basket. You see that now? The problem is not the water. The problem is there is no retainership from the basket because there are gaps. The assignment of all that I've dealt with is to close those gaps so that when the anointing rests upon you now, you see, it is supported by all of this knowledge that you have gotten. There is impossible to listen to what I have said and understand what I have said and act upon what I have said and then remain in poverty. No. You may not overnight suddenly become a billionaire, but I assure you, you can come out of that grave, that grave of poverty, that grave of lack, that grave of begging left, right, and center. I submit to you with every sense of humility. You ignore what I've said tonight. It will be to the detriment of the quality of your life. 
including finances because the kingdom does not work on superstition these systems are exact they are not my opinions the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things our hands have handled even of the word of life the apostle said that that is what we preach you have not learned tonight cunningly devised fables you are not learning theory that was downloaded from a book you are not learning the thoughts of one philosopher somewhere distilled with verses and communicated no by the grace of God we may not have everything but we have something enough to be able to say this is proof that this works hallelujah when God reminded me of this and put this burden in my heart I knew that it was important to share this that financial captivity is a yoke is a curse it should not be in the life of a believer and for as long as you keep magnifying financial captivity and magnifying poverty and giving it a position in your life through ignorance as though this were an impossible mountain to sum to surmount you can surmount lack and financial limitation financial captivity using these keys there are many others but this is sufficient the assignment of this is to bring you out of the grave are we together that you can give your wife your husband your children your company a quality life that people should not sit down and regret as though cursed simply because they came out of your loins or they came out of your lineage there are many of us right now your past is mad with all kinds of not too good stories and most of them have been credited to financial captivity it's led you into all kinds of lifestyles it's led you into all kinds of things that are testimonies you do not want to think about but the Lord is bringing deliverance tonight now hear me as we begin to pray I will rebuke the spirit of poverty the spirit of poverty is a spirit that is assigned to individuals the assignment watch this the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the extent of your ignorance and to build systems around your ignorance that stop you from making financial progress let me repeat the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the level of your ignorance the Bible says no weapon fashioned against us weapons are fashioned are we together so when the devil comes sending the spirit of poverty he does not just attack because poverty like prosperity is is an effect it's not a cause so it doesn't make sense to say Satan stop finances to come to you. It's a, ref it's a reaction. What he does is to study your whole financial understanding or otherwise. And he now begins to build systems either through pride or through laziness. Are we together? Or stopping you from having strategic relationships. Everything that can be designed to stop you from accessing the keys that bring you out that is the assignment of the spirit of poverty it now becomes a stronghold upon your mind and upon your destiny making the word of god of non-effect so when you are bringing deliverance to an individual preaching deliverance what you are doing is opening their eyes to see but that influence is still there this is where the assignment of the power of god comes to dislodge that spirit influence this is what you call generational causes. This is what you call familiar spirits. They, and you know because, listen, spirits don't die. So you can think that because your father is 70, 80, or you are 40, 30, 20, those spirits do not feel the effect of the longevity of time. They stay there and they remain until a savior arises. I repeat, until a savior arises, not until time passes. And could it be that you are that savior whilst you are listening to me thank God that you still have a chance to make this right and for some of you who are fortunate to still have your loved ones God is giving you an opportunity right now that you can correct a lot of things there are many of you who have never supported the cause of the kingdom with your finances not because you do not want to it is not even there there are many pastors today burdened with all kinds of financial yokes the discussion largely is money not giving you room to serve God with the dignity of integrity hallelujah 
statistics tell us that the top three reasons why divorce happens in marriage is number one financial issues are we together number two issues between spouse and then number three external factors statistic tells us that these are the top three reasons number one money and financial issues and don't say it does not matter there are people right now who have not received their salaries for a few months and their children are back home when others are going to school they will not go the fact that those children cannot make progress already begins to plant complex in them ready tools for the spirit of poverty to come he will now start suggesting lifestyles and suggesting all kinds of things are we together there are some of us right now when you started your walk with God you chose the path of integrity and character and right now you look back and, and, and you are not even happy about what is happening because your hands have been mad in all kinds of wrong things all credited to the absence of finance but we are going to pray the Lord has brought us this word and it's time for you to be free if you believe that shout aloud amen, amen. this is my assignment and I will do it with diligence I will pray I will speak over your life and see to it that no weapon fashioned against you it is not the economy that controls your resources it is your understanding it is these forces at work in you ladies and gentlemen government will come and go the great recession once happened in the globe every kind of there are circles of recession that will always happen you will always find corrupt leaders you will find honest leaders you will find godly leaders you will find satanic leaders interchange hands through the years believing that a government will magically come and make you prosperous is being ignorant your prosperity is defined by the sum total of your understanding. Are we together? Daniel was a, a believer in the God of heaven who reigned through the dispensation about, of about four to seven kings. Bible history tells us none of those kings could take him out of relevance because he found the key. He was not there to look for money, yet he never lacked. Regardless the government, he was still prosperous. Hallelujah. Give your destiny a chance to be blessed. And let me wrap up by saying this. The purpose of financial blessings like I have taught you, money has a threefold assignment in the life of the believer. Number one, financial resources empower you to live a comfortable life. Never forget that. You will never live a comfortable life in poverty. And by the way, poverty does not glorify God. The Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? God will not use poverty and twist your hand and curse your children to teach you a lesson there are more superior ways to guide you and teach you a lesson and build you and train you are we together now number two the second assignment of wealth prosperity and abundance listen carefully is for kingdom advance so that you can make your contribution as far as supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is concerned the work of the Lord does not just depend on anointing and grace and doctrine. It depends on the availability of financial resources communicated from and through willing hearts who are prosperous. That means the more people prosper genuinely, the more resources can be made available for, financial, for, for kingdom activities. And then number three, the last purpose of wealth and re financial resources is to empower you so that you can be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Listen carefully. Remember that you are not just empowered just for Christians alone. There are many people dying out there. There is a world that needs to see an extension of the love of Jesus beyond prejudices of religion and all of that. And financial prosperity empowers you to be a blessing. Unfortunately, unbelievers are doing this by far better than believers by far better than believers you look at the ratio of charity organizations constructively empowering the poor feeding the hungry clothing the naked what jesus said if you do it is called pure religion those who have not professed jesus are the ones doing it by far better than believers 
and we have a role to play as far as making our contribution is concerned. This is the threefold purpose of wealth for a believer. Anything outside this, you are pushing yourself to the corridors of waste, regret, and compromise. Can we pray now? Please rise up on your feet. There are just three prayer points we are going to pray and I speak over your life. The first prayer point is you are going to ask for grace. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. The grace to imbibe this that you have learned in your spirit so that it works for you. Please lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord. Everywhere, outside, connecting online, lift your voice and begin to pray. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Open up your heart and cry to the God of heaven. I declare that I am a doer of the word. The things that make for poverty, I obtain grace to make quality decisions that close these doors from my life, close these doors from my church, close these doors from my business. I am ready to be empowered. The problem is not the recession. The problem is not the, 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 the economy of the nations. Hallelujah. Number two. I'd like you to pray that the spirit of poverty, that spirit that has taken advantage of ignorance or incomplete knowledge and is praying over your finances, praying over your family's finances, I'd like you to decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant, it stops from this night. Is someone praying? Open your mouth and pray. Do not allow yourself continue in lack and want. It is not the will of God and it is totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Not with the abundance of knowledge that you have access to. Someone pray, I rebuke the spirit of poverty. Whether it has been generational, in the name of Jesus we decree and declare. You will not find a place in my life are you praying? You will not find a place in my children. Pray. You will not find a place in my spouse, not in my company, not in the ministry God has given. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. All the decisions that are pro-poverty, I come against you and the spirit that influences my attitude, the spirit that influences my decisions, praying upon my ignorance the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus hallelujah the final prayer point and then it will be my turn to pray for you I'd like you to pray there is the power to get wealth yes there is there truly is the power to get wealth please do not take serious anybody who tells you there is no anointing that prospers people there is the power to get wealth. Let God be true and all men liars. You are going to pray. Father, I've been imparted, I've been anointed before, but the power to get wealth, let it rest upon my life now. Open your mouth and pray. The power to get wealth. God is able to empower men. He's able to provide a supernatural engracing upon your spirit and your mind that causes you to be extraordinary in producing results results that make you extremely valuable results that attracts resources to you results that connects you to the heart of men and help us someone pray someone pray you are about to receive in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let me speak over your life now father in the name of jesus i decree and declare you gave me this instruction to bring this prophetic word as a deliverance in the name of jesus i decree and declare that mantle and that grace 
that makes for wealth that took ordinary people in scripture and even ordinary people in our day to day and has exalted them bringing beauty for ashes and joy for mourning I decree and declare may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now rest upon your business rest upon your ministry rest upon your household rest upon your career in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this grace I speak prophetically over you that everything that represents the shame and the reproach connected to poverty I declare that it dies over your life now every family here that has never experienced genuine prosperity is always from poverty to poverty you saw those before you you saw your parents some of you right now and you're about transferring the same to your children in the name of Jesus may this anointing intercept that progression intercept that progression in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. It was not always so. Every failed business here, every dead or dying business, I decree and declare, may help us show up and lift you back. May help us show up and lift you back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. One of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, I will discuss that when we take the financial series proper. But one of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, please listen to me, is to make you run into debt. One of the major strategies of crippling your finances is to make you get into debt. Now, I know from an economic standpoint, there is good debt, there's bad debt, they say. There is good debt that can be used as a leverage, you know, and bad debt for fueling consumption. I'm not downplaying your knowledge. That is important according to your faith. But let me tell you the most superior ways to not be in debt. For the Bible says, Oh, no man, nothing but love. It is a possibility according to your faith. You believe in debt, no problem. The wisdom to manage whatever you receive. Now, I'm speaking largely personally. I know that corporately, many times people would need help from institutions to execute large projects. That is corporate. I'm talking about there is no reason why you should get into debt personally. It's a terrible thing. Because let me tell you what happens. This spirit constrains you and then it forces you to start borrowing money until it becomes an addiction. And every time you borrow money, it will schedule activities to make sure that money was never used for the reason why it was borrowed. So interest begins to pile up while there is no achievement that should bring you that profit. There are many churches today that are in debt. There are many supposed wealthy people today that are in debt there are many you are not free if you are in debt because it sustains the ability to stop you from sleeping the moment you have abundance plus time plus peace you are truly wealthy these three things must happen for wealth to be established if the only thing you have is abundance of financial resources even if you have systems the goal of these systems is to allow you the time and then peace resources time peace that is kingdom wealth that is true financial dominion that tripartite coexistence of wealth time and peace because these are the three most expensive commodities if you lose time and peace whatever else you got by losing them was a bad bargain are we together praise the name of the lord so the spirit of poverty has made many of us, some of us right now probably are in debt of thousands, millions, billions, and you want to get into more. No. Every time people got into debt from scripture, it was the prophetic that brought them out. The prophetic is mandated with the responsibility of rescue, particularly from financial debt. Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought it out. The woman who was owing you know, the prophet who died and left his wife in debt, the prophet said, go and borrow vessels, not oil. To borrow means to plead from people, just bring it. And the Bible says he filled it and he said, go and sell it 
and now give, you know, pay off your debt and leave off the rest. The first thing the prophet told the woman to do when you are blessed is pay off your debt because you can't live in peace when you have debt. That was the prophet's recommendation. Are we together? So I want to pray for you. If you are in any kind of financial situation of debt, whether personally, as a family, or corporately, in the name of Jesus, please believe this prophecy. Between now and December 2023, I prophesy upon you, come out of that debt. Come out of that financial situation. Come out of that financial situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. How will it happen, Apostle? Very simple. The ministry of men. It, there is no magic as to how people come out of debt. It is always the ministry of men. God will send men disguised as systems, disguised as relationships. It is yours to now discern and be ready when it comes. You don't come out of debt by superstition. When prophecy is released as it was over Samaria, the next thing was men. Even if they are lepers, they will be the ones to use to rescue Samaria. Every time prophecy comes, start paying attention to men. They will come with business ideas. They will come with superior projects. They will come with their well wishes just to bail you out. A show of kindness. Or they will come, somebody can just bless you. Oh, apostle, I'm owing 30 million. And God gives someone an instruction. I will not give you money, but I give you one of my properties as a gift. You value that property and they say it's 80 million. You are out of debt already. It's up to you now. Let me tell you one of the major ways that God brings people out of debt is through the power of land and its resources. Because it is very difficult for somebody to come and give you one million, but he can give you a slice of the earth. And the Bible says, out of the earth comes increase. It says the increase of the earth is for all. He never said the increase of a company. So if everywhere runs to you, go to the earth for your portion. The earth has a portion for all men. This is a strategy. I'm not, I'm not foolish as you hear me talk to you. The earth is a universal bailout system that God uses to bring men out of financial troubles. The increase of the earth is for all, it says. That means if they reject you, if you are in debt, there's no guarantee that the increase in the bank, you have a share there. But this earth is a universal standpoint. The moment you are in debt, trust God to use the power of the earth and its fullness as a mystery to bail you out. Hmm. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, let the power to prosper, the engracing that can rest on men and women and program them for extraordinary success. I declare by the privilege of this apostolic and prophetic mantle, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Be delivered from every financial captivity. Hear me, what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, for some of you, what has never been done before you, I empower you by this anointing, go and do it. Extraordinary results in business, extraordinary results in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, many of you will come and stand here and begin to testify of strange financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this anointing, everybody mandated to help you, especially in this month, in this month of April, leave May, leave June, we're talking April. I don't know where they are, but I can call them by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gave power to men, I declare this week that is coming, I stand by this mantle. I call for strange helpers, strange helpers, strange lifters. In the name of Jesus Christ. That by reason of this that you have heard, some of you, by God, you will step into prepared blessings. You will be sitting down. Someone will call you and give you a car. 
call you and give you a house. I'm telling you, call you and give you a job. He has trained you so his hands will not be restrained in blessing you. There are some of you who are in ministry. God will give people instructions and say they should come and hold your hands and see to it that you never go down again. Every family struggling financially, whether to pay school fees, to pay rent, to complete building projects, or maybe to fund projects that are ongoing in the name of Jesus this week, may Ebenezer, the helper of men, may he arise and surprise you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. No Jesus, no help. No Jesus, no guarantee for sustainable um, life, especially even in your finances. Listen to me. The first key I gave you to financial abundance is not money. I told you and I've taught you even when I was dealing with the power to get wealth that the first spiritual law that, that, that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender. Not tithing, not giving, not value. In order of priority, it is your relationship with Jesus. I want to make an altar call. There are many of us here who really truly need to make this decision. You need to make it right with Jesus. And to say the primary reason why my family even became victims of these financial vicissitudes is because they ignored Jesus Christ. Perhaps you are the first person who God is giving a chance to correct, to make right what has been wrong. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've done many things that are wrong. I need to make my way right with Jesus. I have just one minute for you. Please do not wait for anyone to be the first. I'd like you to leave your seat right where you are. As the Spirit of God is speaking to you, come and stand right here and do same with all the overflows. There has to be someone coming to Jesus. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. Make your way to this place. All the overflows, make your way to your LED screens. And those who are following online, here is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Koinonia, give them a big hand clap as they come. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for saying yes to a new beginning. Thank you for saying yes to life eternal. Thank you for saying yes. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, make that very quickly. And those who are following online, I'm about to pray. Make sure you participate in the prayer. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your courage. If there are any ones coming, please hurry up so that we start the prayer together. Young and old, you are welcome. Come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning and to bring all this crisis to a permanent end in your life. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and he promises to give you rest. This is Jesus for you. God bless you. Let me request all of you in front, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus, and then say this after me. You don't have to kneel. You can stand, but if you choose to kneel, that's fine. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, with hands lifted, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. Thank you because no one can come to the Father except through the Son. They have come making faith declarations. I decree and declare that they are recipients of eternal Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too.
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 